Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson. I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. We're a teaching center that focuses on hands-on courses to improve your knowledge and skills in general dentistry. And today we're going to tackle the topic of direct pulp capping with biodentin. This is a Septodont product and I want to thank Septodont for donating the product for this particular video. Indications for direct pulp capping are numerous, but it's really important for us to remember that the tooth must be vital. It also must have a diagnosis of normal apical tissues and a pulpal diagnosis of reversible pulpitis, never symptomatic irreversible pulpitis, and never with any apical pathologies. The tooth cannot be responding to uh, pain in an unprovoked manner. It has to be a provoked pain response and it cannot be a long duration. We're looking at the disassembly now of uh, an old composite restoration. This is obviously a simulated case. I'm not using water so that I can show you the uh, features of the preparation and the steps and not have the water get in the way of you seeing these details. But the initial step is to disassemble and we're utilizing a 330 diamond burr and we're just trying to get the ideal depth in all locations and extension and then we'll work ourselves towards the outer portion of the outline form to make sure that the DEJ is completely free of caries. We have a little undermined enamel and some residual composite left on that facial wall, so that has to be removed. And once that's removed, then we'll be able to get into the caries removal steps. And we know that this decay is very close to the pulp, so when we start to remove, we're going to utilize the largest round burr we can in a slow speed handpiece. If you're using electric, I would recommend something around 5,000 RPM. You could even go slower or you just use a friction grip attachment on a slow speed handpiece like I'm doing here. And I'm going to focus on the periphery and seek to find more clean enamel dentin junction and more dentin that's clean, uh, that has a tough texture that is not going to be soft. We're not going to focus on the area above the pulp as much, but uh, we're eventually going to get to the part where we are uh, reducing more pulpal dentin as we're doing this caries removal process. But the key is to, to work peripherally, and you can see how the emphasis is being paid, placed on the peripheral removal of defective tooth structure rather than uh, pushing the burr straight down into the middle of the caries. I like to use a large round burr because it, uh, it's safer than a smaller round burr, which could easily punch into an area and cause a pulp exposure. We are going to get to the point where the, uh, the pulp is nearly exposed. In fact, there will be some communication of the pulpal tissue to the uh, cavity wall, uh, hence the direct pulp capping methodology being employed. And you can, uh, you'll be able to see that readily here in this particular case. Rubber dam is essential. All of the techniques in pulp capping, whether they be direct or indirect, uh, rely heavily on rubber dam placement if you're going to look at all of the studies that have been done on this topic. So now we're at the point now we have uh, pulp exposed. Uh, you can see it very easily here, uh, kind of bleeding through a very thin area of uh, dentin, blushing around it. But the periphery is very clean and the rubber dam is sealed. So now I'm going to disinfect the area with some chlorhexidine. I'm going to use 2% chlorhexidine. If the pulp were bleeding at this point, I would use a 3% solution of sodium hypochlorite and make sure the bleeding stopped. And if the bleeding did not stop within 10 minutes, then we'd be obligated to initiate a traditional root canal therapy and perform a pulpectomy. Because there is no uh, bleeding at all, we're just going to use the chlorhexidine product at this particular time. And the chlorhexidine can either be blotted dry or blown dry. We're now ready to protect this tooth for the direct restoration that we're going to be performing later with biodentine. And the product is, uh, comes in these little capsules. You're going to put five drops of liquid per capsule into this 
little receptacle here. And then you're going to seal the capsule and then take this and put it into your standard amalgamator or your triturator uh, to mix the product for 30 seconds. Which may seem like a long time, but the mixing uh, needs to be thorough in order for this product to work its best. And you want to triturate at about 4,000 to 4,200 cycles per minute in whatever amalgamator you have. At the conclusion of the mix, you're then going to retrieve the capsule and open it up and then you'll find at this point that the product will be in the ideal consistency. You can then take it either with a spatula, an MTA a delivery device, or even with a, a condenser and place it over the region requiring the pulpal protection. I'd like to demonstrate how this works in a live patient here. You can see an image A from a series of images that I published in an article that I co-wrote in the Clinics of North America on pulpal therapy. And you can see that the pulp exposure in B had to be covered in C with the biodentin product followed by glass anomer to tack it down into place and then a base in item E of glass anomer followed by the final composite restoration. So you can see the radiographs at the bottom G is the preoperative. H and I represent the case after 24 months. You can see that there's been excellent repair of the pulp and also no signs of any apical disease at all. The patient was completely asymptomatic. And rather than this being an exception, this is actually the typical finding when we're using the product in this particular manner. So it's quite encouraging. I like to take a little bit of the, the liquid that comes with it to just get it to dissipate and spread out a little bit over this. Uh, this is my technique for the direct pulp capping procedure. I don't like to push uh, down hard on it. I like to make sure that it lays over the area nicely. So I do play with the consistency just a little bit so that I can get it to flow over this pulp. And I'm really looking at this point for an excellent seal and I'm looking for all of that bioactive uh, technology to do its thing. I'm looking for this biosilicate to perform its uh, regeneration procedures and I'm looking at it from a therapeutic standpoint. If I were going to be placing the biodentine in a larger volume, I would use it in a more viscous manner so that it could be more packable. Because I've mixed it like this and waited 12 minutes for it to set fully, and I've mixed it somewhat thin, uh, it's so well contained and placed over the, the deep area. But it is potentially not quite as strong in compressive strength than it would be if I were using the biodentine without diluting it. So for this particular uh, application, I'm going to take a glass ionomer and I'm going to flow the glass ionomer over the surface to provide an enhancement of the compressive strength. I'm going to let this resin modified glass ionomer contain the biodentin to tack it down to the uh, tooth structure and hold it firmly in position. I'm often asked, why don't I use products that are composite based? And my response is really quite simple. Uh, they don't work nearly as well. And clinical trials have shown that the single tube composite based systems are actually quite harsh on the pulp. So I'd recommend that we avoid them. And then of course, we're gonna like here this uh, to uh, full set for this uh, glass honomer. At the conclusion of this, um, it will behave entirely like uh, an MTA type of uh, pulp capping procedure uh, with uh, the same product that you could use even for placing a temporary uh, filling in a case where you had deep caries. So the versatility of the product is pretty amazing. So at this point, uh, the lesion has been uh, 
firmly secured and sealed and now it's ready for uh, maybe some final preparation modification. Uh, I can clean up the gingival wall, maybe do some things in that facial wall for the composite. But thank you so much for watching.